and then you find all the orders where uh, chocolate is part of this order, who sold these orders, which other orders were sold by this employee, which other products were in there, so kind of a cross sell, which products were sold together with chocolate, for instance, right? So you, then you can uh, do something about that. Uh, so you kind of look at the other product and count how often it was uh, sold with chocolate by a certain employee. So you know who's actually good at selling, uh, I don't know, chocolate with, with cherries or something. Okay. Um, to uh, I'll show you the stuff quickly in action, I have to... Um, so this is Neo4j uh, running in the background with its uh, UI, and I just add some data to it. So this is the usual movie graph of actors and um, directors in movies. And uh, now when I want to uh, run uh, based on that, what I just do, I find patterns. So for instance, I can say uh, match p person where name is Tom Hanks. And then it's uh, just return P, and this is, should be one person, Tom Hanks. And if I want to, I can kind of find his movie so, like this, but I can also express this as a graph pattern and say uh, where he acted in the movie. And then I run this and then I get the same stuff. And then I can say, okay, I want to see uh, for Tom actually all movies. Uh, as, as aggregation, kind of his uh, filmography. And if I look at the role thing, then I see Tom Hanks here. I can actually return his name. Um, and uh, all his movies. And of course, if I don't want this just for Tom, but for all actors, then I just say, give me this for all actors. And then uh, I can also, of course, count how many movies are there. <coughs> and. Um, Give me the top five actors, something like this. And um, for instance, if I want to only see actors who have more than five movies, I would kind of change this um, return into a width. Give the, have to give them some names. Um, so Tom, or the, the uh, actor name as name, uh, the movie title as movies, collection of movie title as movies, and uh, the count as C. And then just say where C greater than 5. And I can do uh, the ordering either past filtering or pre filtering. Uh, if I do it past filtering, I have to order less. But I could also say I move this order by here, and, <coughs> uh, but I leave it there. And so, uh, or I have to return stuff. And these are my two top actors, because it's not actually five, but just two that make the top list. And you see that's already a pretty complex thing. Uh, what I can also do here is to say also where p dot name or their, uh, yeah, p dot name uh, starts with t or something like that, and it leaves us with two names. So, um, so you see you can pretty quickly uh, express complex complex stuff and that's not all I can also say okay instead of just seeing seeing the movies I want to see the directors as well and then um, I would not miss the comma and then I also see the, uh, the directors and uh, of all the movies and it might be that there are some duplicates, then if there are some duplicates, then they can just. Yes. So, um, as I will soon talk about implementation, I just want to show you that uh, actually you can uh, access the credit plans in, in Safi here. Uh, so, this is a pretty simple one. Um, so, you see it looks over the whole graph to find this node and then uh, filters, <coughs> uh, expands. Uh, expands twice actually, uh, projects that's the width, uh, then it does an aggregation as part of the width, then it does another projection, uh, then it does the filter for the um, size, and then it does the top end and uh, returns the results. And there should be also a sort somewhere, or oh, the top, uh, top 
thing is a uh, top case event. So you can see the kind of the explain query plan, but you can also run profile, and when you run profile, then it actually also shows you how much a database access it. So this is actually a pretty simple query plan. I have some more uh, advanced ones. I don't know. Oh no, I just could find out the code. Um, so, so the query that I mentioned before, um, the two-headed line query actually creates a query plan that you can turn into a poster. <coughs> so I told these people that wrote this that they actually should decorate their office with their query plans as a as a kind of nice touch. So it gets pretty complicated. So, yeah. How are you approaching query optimization? Uh, I'll talk about it in a oh, Awesome. Um, and that's also just, we are, we are, we've started with query optimizations, but we're not at the end of it, so it's, uh, there's still a lot of stuff to do. Um, for some simpler queries, uh, we also support already uh, bytecode compilation, so then the Cypher query is actually not interpreted like this one is, but it's actually compiled to Java bytecode and then run and optimized by the JVM as, uh, as an optimized uh, operation. Okay, so um, so what you see here as well is kind of the total database hits, hits and how long it ran, uh, which is probably way too long. And for instance, if I do an index on person name, uh, then and I rerun this query again, it, it's not an um, or it's still um, because it's too much too little data in the database. Um, let me. Just add some more data. So, and if you run this again, yeah, then it's a node index seek. Uh, oh, it's actually node index seek by range because the start uh, thing is uh, using uh, index as well. All right. Um, so much for this demo. Um, uh, the implementation of Cypher, we started quite a while ago. I think it was three years ago to start with Cypher. Uh, with Cypher. Uh, first one was only read-only uh, queries. Uh, it used a really primitive query planner, kind of just went from left to right through the query and added operations for that. Then we added it to, to our server API, added collection functions, and, and so on. In Neo4j 1.8, which was two years ago, I think, uh, we added write operations. Or two and a half years ago, we added write operations, which brought an interesting part to it because then you have to kind of control the visibility of changes because if you match against something and you create at the same time you have to watch out that you don't kind of leak your create operation into the match and then you kind of get to the endless things so it had to add some eagerness stuff which is sometimes a bit more annoying uh, then in one nine we added um, uh, profiling execution plan visualizations and um, also made sure that we are always lazy as much as possible so Cypher is only pulling stuff from the graph while it's returning data. And the only thing that causes it to be uh, non-lazy is uh, ordering and aggregation, actually. But otherwise, it's uh, only uh, lazy. So in Neo4j 2.0, there, there was a big change. We added this label concept to the property graph model, which also came up in Cypher. And then we could add like things like the option schema stuff. And added also new uh, merge keyword, the up uh, kind of the get or create things, little maps, and we added a new parser which was based on top world, uh, not um, uh, parser combinators in, in Scala anymore. An optional match, which is kind of an outer join, so if you kind of match for a pattern. Usually, it, if it doesn't find a pattern, you get no results. And in an optional match, kind of the non not found results will be set with now. So you can kind of get still something back, but you see what it didn't find. And to one, we added uh, load CSV, the, the data input stuff, and a new planner, a cost based planner. So you combine, uh, compute database statistics and use these statistics to uh, start optimizing query in a better way. And we added unwind. Uh, in a steakhouse, actually, and um, then in 2.2, cost planner became default. Uh, and there was also a new uh, cost planner, not the uh, original one, which performed much better. And in 2.3, uh, I forgot to put in what we added in 2.3, we added also some stuff in 2.3. Uh, ah, the, the text stuff, exactly. So it starts with an interface. So it's pretty easy to try it out, just get me for j and uh, you can try it. 
And you can use it in the embedded Java API via HTTP and also in the future via our binary protocol in PMJS3. And uh, it's pretty simple across all languages. Uh, so Chris works on the PHP driver, but we also have drivers for the net Java, JavaScript, uh, for C, C++, and, and so on. And it's a bit more efficient as well. Um, how does it work? Um, today we are parsing the of course, into an AST. Then we normalize and opt uh, optimize the AST. We do a kind of constant following. We also compute uh, already expressions that we can compute. We rewrite a query uh, in, in, in some parts. Uh, so for instance, the inline property syntax is actually rewritten into a, a, into a predicate. Um, and you rewrite some, some other stuff as well. We do some semantic checking as well as stuff that the parser couldn't catch. For instance, like type system stuff is, uh, is done in, the, in this phase and so on. So that's kind of the um, optimized normaliz normalization of the AST. And then you create a gra query graph. It's kind of a high level description of this, uh, of this query. And then we uh, throw it at the uh, uh, at the optimizer to, to create a logical plan and compute the cost for the different plans. And right now it uses an uh, IDP uh, dynamic programming uh, optimizer. We used to do a greedy, greedy optimizer before, which had the problem that it ran into local minima, and then you had kind of some sub optimal uh, query plans. And this is much more exhaustive uh, in terms of planning. Query. So it kind of creates a logical query plan and then we create an, a physical execution plan which kind of turns this uh, logical query plan into actual operators that execute on the And then we run it. And this whole stuff could be expensive in some cases. That's why we also cache the uh, string to logical plan and logical plan to physical plan thing. So next time you come around, um, it's very fast. So it looks like this in pictures. And um, yeah, since uh, 2.2, we're using by default the cost based optimizer uh, with database statistics. So we kind of, while the database is transactionally adding there, we also transactionally add a, uh, update the uh, statistics of database, like degrees of nodes, degrees by, uh, by um, type and direction. Uh, Selectivity of properties, selectivities of indexes, and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of tricky to kind of tune this cost-based stuff because oftentimes some kind of small changes have a big impact, and perhaps at some point you don't have to do it anymore if I trust Frank. No. Um, yeah, so currently uh, um, in 2.2 it's used for read operations, and in 3.0 it will also be used for write operations. And um, we, um, something I didn't show you in the, in, the, in the visual, in the demo was, if you have some stuff in the query that makes it not optimal, you get this kind of little yellow warning sign on the side of your query, and if you click on it, it says, you're actually create, creating a cohesive product, or you, you're kind of filtering on node where there's no index, or you had, have a typo in your query because you use a label or a property that actually doesn't exist in the, uh, in the database. And um, so that's actually pretty helpful, especially for people getting started. So Claire plans, you already saw them. Um, OK, so much as what we have right now. And we started in, in uh, October to launch this open Cypher project, which should turn, so the goal is to turn Cypher into an open graphical language. So meaning, right now, Cypher has been developed uh, and uh, implemented only by Neo. And uh, with OpenStuff, we want to kind of make it open and kind of hand it over to everyone to, to use, to implement, to do whatever. Right. So, and why do we do that? Because we love Cypher and uh, our users love Cypher. And uh, actually, you just want to make everyone happy. That's the end goal, anyway. And, um, and we want to allow uh, everyone to, or enable everyone to run Cypher on their own data, on their own databases, and, and so on. So that's actually pretty cool. And Cypher is actually, uh, something that I should have put in, um, Cypher is actually not just good for um, <coughs> graph data querying and, and uh, updates, it's also good for, uh, 
it's also good for expressing other things. So for instance, Chris created a graph data generator that uses Cypher with a slight extension to represent uh, data, uh, data models that you can use to generate uh, test data for your uh, graph data. Or um, Martin uh, used a uh, Cypher variant to express um, a test uh, scenario. So you can kind of express kind of assertions on, on graphs uh, with, with uh, syntax like that. And uh, also in graph there is also a similar uh, framework that uses cipher patterns to test against software. And we actually want to col collaborate much more with everyone to create a really cool query language. So there's many things like, for instance, subgraph stuff uh, that Martin added, uh, which are really, really interesting. So and why do people love it? Uh, because it's, yeah, it's pretty easy to write, easy to understand. Uh, some people say it's easier to write in English, which might be not true. So it's actually pretty, pretty interesting. Okay, so what's the, what's the idea behind it? We want to decouple the language from Neo4j. So kind of we pull out uh, the stuff that we have right now in Neo4j as, a, as the open source project and pull it into a separate project, into the open software project. We want to open the kind of whole language development process, make it more transparent, more inclusive, um, and encourage uh, creation of new tools, like testers, like generators, like highlighters, databases that implement it and so on. And uh, what you want to do is you want to provide language documentation, tools and implementation, reference implementation uh, for Cypher. And the whole thing should be uh, governed by Cypher language, Cypher language Group. So we, we thought about kind of giving it to an international standards organization, but that would probably kill the language. And that's why we kind of didn't want to do that. And um, yeah, so what do we have? Uh, something that you already have is the CIP, Cypher Improvement Proposal. So if someone has an idea on how to improve Cypher as a language, you can just send a pull request uh, to, to this repository that contains uh, some kind of uh, consistent stuff. And uh, you can also submit feature requests when you have an idea but you have don't have a kind of formal thing around just an itch uh, or hunch what you want to do. And there's already a number of accepted uh, CIPs. Uh, there's also templates and information about the contribution process. And this CRP looks like this, so we have some, so it's all in ASCII doc, so it's kind of textual markup, pretty nice to uh, read and render and write. So motivation background, so why do I want to have this change? What do I want to achieve by that? The actual proposal with syntax and semantics. Alternatives, what exists already out there that kind of is similar or different from that. What does, does happen with the existing language? Is it affected by that or not, or the implementations? And um, what's really cool about this proposal and what's actually not so cool about this proposal. Right. And here's an example of the uh, start with so the text-based uh, support uh, uh, CIP. So it's pretty straightforward and things like, for instance, the subgraph stuff could be easily end up in So we have a three, yeah, I'll, I just talk faster. Um, so we have already some deliverables that we did and some that we still have outstanding. So one is kind of this self-improvement process that I just showed you today. The governing body is also existing. And uh, actually, as of today, we released the first EBNF grammar for Cypher. So that's really cool. That's, you know, so you're the first that hear about it because it was just pushed to the GitHub repository uh, two hours ago or something like that. Uh, so this grammar enables people to write, for instance, highlighters or um, verifiers for the uh, language. It allows you to uh, gener uh, do uh, query generation and, and validation and so um, Other things that we want to do is uh, TCK for Cypher, so you can validate implementations. Uh, we want to provide a reference documentation and a full language spec. <coughs> and we also want to provide a reference implementation under a patchy license. Uh, plus Cypher guides and also opening up at some point the, the language group. So for the language spec, we already have now the BNF grammar and want to add all the other things that you know from, from SQL, from Postgres, for instance, they have a really nice uh, documentation here. Uh, semantic specification, especially also type systems and um, other things, and that should be all creative comments. Uh, the EBNF that was released today, here's a quick uh, cut out of that. Uh, this is kind of match unwind merge. Uh, and there's much more before and after that, and you can find it in the GitHub repository. Uh, yeah. So 
I'm really excited about this because now people can really start the cool tools. For instance, there's a guy in uh, Lithuania, I think, who wrote a JetBrains IntelliJ uh, plugin for Zephyr editing and highlighting and so on. And he wrote his own EBNF, and now he can use uh, just this one. Uh, TCK validates implementations, and it should kind of certify that uh, it complies with a certain version of Zephyr. And based on certain data sets, execute queries, compare results, and see that they provide you with that. Style, style guide, you already pretty fine, the style guide, uh, which kind of explain what we think the expressions in the language should look like. But then there should be much more uh, in the RFM documentation, including uh, tutorials and graph gifs with lots of examples. So some examples from the style guide are what labels should be spelled like, relationship types, properties, and so on. Then how, which direction pattern should uh, be uh, uh, directed and for instance, putting encode nodes first, and there's not, not there's much more stuff in this style guide as well. So th this is pretty far already, and will be also released soon. The reference implementation is not as far yet as we want it to be, but uh, it's something that we want to release as Apache license, uh, so everyone can use it, do whatever, and so it's kind of split up into different parts: a parser turning uh, into an ST, and then a query planner and a query runtime as well. And that can be either used as an example to learn about it or as a base or foundation for implementation. So back in the days when Cypher was still based on the Neo4j, Java API also wrote kind of implementations that run Cypher on object graphs or on file systems and stuff like that, just for, for fun. And stuff, something like this you can then also do with this reference implementation. Just put it onto something and run it, and then you can suddenly query your heap or something like that. Right? So the so language group is kind of a steering committee and uh, the caretakers of the language and they want to kind of make sure that this kind of these guiding princ principles for instance, making the uh, common things easy and the other things possible that one that it always stays a humane language and it's focused on readability and so on. And actually uh, sometimes I was a bit frustrated with this here, I have to say, because I, of course I want to get in cool stuff and then they tell me, did you actually really think about the long-term effects of your kind of proposal and what will it do to the language and, and so on? And then I had some, uh, yeah, I had to withdraw some of my suggestions actually. But actually, it's good that they kind of focus on the kind of longer, longer term goals. And so the quick fixes and hacks will not end up in the language, which is actually good. And it, they also publish their, their meeting uh, minutes and results, so you'll find them also on the website as well. Some people like it um, and uh, want to support it, and uh, so that's really nice. And there uh, are some people <coughs> that actually want to support OpenSelf, and hopefully it will be many more. And so if you are representing an open source project, an organization, or anything, and you think that's a good idea, then let us know, and we happily add you to, to the list and work with you on a really close basis. And uh, you find this all the stuff on GitHub and online, and that's What's a Google group, and you're welcome to join the process and build a really cool GraphQL language. Uh, thank you. Uh, after, just that I don't forget it, uh, we have, uh, after uh, FOSTEM, a smallish table this year, I know, with 50, I think, Chris? 50, right? So if you still want to join, come come by it and let me know, and we will try to fit you in. And, um, yeah, it's probably good, and if you have any questions, uh, we have a few more minutes, actually, except if I have uh, any questions from anybody.